Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all really well. Today I have a slightly different kind of concept for my video, something I've not really done before, but actually I thought this might be quite useful. So if you enjoy this by the end of the video, let me know and I'll maybe make a series on this kind of thing. So a lot of my channel is based around kind of do's and don'ts and style tips. And quite a lot of the time I show you what I wouldn't do or what not to do and what I would do instead to kind of make the outfit look better, elevate the outfit. And these are not hard and fast rules. Like you do not need to follow these. Everybody has their own sense of style, but this is really for those people who are not sure where to start, who want to kind of deep dive into fashion and style and find their style a bit more, but aren't really sure where to start. Um, or just kind of want some tips and seeing that visualization of kind of what I would avoid versus what I would buy often is really helpful or you say it's really helpful. So that is where this video is kind of stemmed from. So today we're going to focus on footwear and what I'm gonna do is show you some styles that I wouldn't buy and then actually explain why I wouldn't buy them and styles that I would replace them with instead. So this is gonna be all autumn footwear. So let us begin with one of autumn's biggest pieces of footwear but also one of the biggest trends at the moment and that is loafers. Okay so here's an example of a loafer that I wouldn't buy and there's a few reasons I would avoid this particular pair. So one I think that chain on top I think it looks quite cheap. I think overall the shoes do look quite cheap and this isn't something that really is that reflective of budget or price. You can actually find more expensive looking pieces in high street shops and also cheaper looking pieces in more expensive shops. So it's not about budget here. It's just looking out for those things that maybe cheapen the look slightly. And I think this chain kind of does that. I think as well, for me, the shape, there's something just a little bit off about the shape. It doesn't feel particularly cool. I think they're very flat looking and very kind of fitted and tight looking. And there's something about the, the height of the, of the loafer that just, I don't know, I just feel like it doesn't feel that fashionable. I think it kind of looks a little bit dated in its shape. And I think that's something to do with kind of the flatness of the shoe versus the height um, of the tongue of the shoe. And then it's got a bit of a clunky heel as well. And I just think overall, it's not really working. Something else I would personally avoid is anything with too much stitching or contrast on it. For example, we've got these chunky loafers with a white stitching. I just would avoid these. I just don't personally like them. I think that this is a personal preference, but um, also I think in terms of styling, it's a lot harder to style when you've got that contrast stitching because it does draw the eye to that bright white stitching. And I just think there's something about it. Again, it just feels a little bit off to me um, and something I would avoid. And then finally for loafers, chunky loafers are definitely in, but for me, it's all about doing a trend in a subtle and minimal way. And I think anything too chunky just feels a little bit too much. It's too in your face. It makes it more difficult to style. They go out of fashion much more quickly. Um, and I think you'll find that you've kind of wasted your money if you buy a very extreme looking pair of shoes. So we've got this one with the really, really clunky sole. And to be honest, I just don't really like that mega chunky look. I do like a chunky loafer, but nothing that's like, I feel like this is maybe a little bit too androgynous. It gives me feeling of like a work boot, um, like a steel toe cap boot, I think because the sole is so thick. I think it's just a bit too extreme. So let's move on to something that I would buy in terms of black loafers. And the first is actually a pair that I do own from Flattered. Um, these are so, so comfortable. I rave about them all the time, so I don't wanna go into too much detail about them, but they are so incredibly comfortable, very easy to throw on. They very much give me the row vibes, very quiet luxury. They are timeless. You can have these in your wardrobe forever, and I think you could put these in anyone's wardrobe of any age and they would work. I think just the fact that I know they're so comfortable is a real selling point for me too. Very soft leather. Um, if you are thinking about them, by the way, and you're maybe a half size, I would go for the size below because they just run a little bit big, which is what I did. I went for a 39 and often I go for a 40 because I'm that half size. And like I said, it's not all about price. You can look to high street shops for these kind of pieces as well. Mango do some really good loafers. Look for something 
just a little bit plainer. You can still do this chunky kind of look, but just something a little bit more minimal. So I think you can go for like a penny loafer style, a bit like the mango ones I'm showing. They just kind of create that chunky look um, but also a little bit more wearable and there's no stitching or bold details on them to kind of distract you from the piece. I just feel like that kind of creates a more expensive look as well. So let's move on to our next category, which is ballet flats. So with the ballet flat, um, they are a traditionally a very simple piece, but I do think you can go wrong with them. And I'm gonna show you a couple of pairs that I personally would avoid. So the first one has this weird kind of twisted detail over the top. Again, I just think they look a little bit cheap. The shape of them as well, it just feels a little bit bland. And then they've got that weird twisting on the front. I just feel like they would look old fashioned again, a little bit dated feeling. And I do again think these look a little bit cheap too. My next pair is a little bit um, more embellished. It's got these kind of rhinestones on. We are seeing this as a bit more of a trend, but I think what you need to be careful with is the actual shape of the ballet flat. When you're looking slightly more towards that trend of the, of the studs, I think you need to look, look for something a little bit more modern in shape, maybe something a little bit different um, rather than these, which is very much like a traditional ballet flat with these small kind of pinky rhinestones on. I just think, I just think these are really bad um, for lots of different reasons. I think the, the particular kind of color of gemstones doesn't work um, in this kind of traditional, very plain ballet flat. Again, just kind of isn't giving anything and I don't even know when you'd wear these. I do love a contrasting ballet flat as well or a quilted ballet flat like the ones I'm showing, but there's just something again about these that I think this particular pair looks a little bit cheap. I think that is to do with the color of the beige as well. Um, I think this kind of pinky beige, you've got to be careful with it because I do think a pinky beige can look a little bit cheaper than a warmer beige tone. There's just not something I'm loving about this. And I think sometimes you can just look at a picture online and know whether the um, actual material of whatever they use for this shoe um, is going to look good uh, or not. <laughs> and I think in this case, I think the material of the shoe just looks a bit cheap. So just a shout out to a pair, again, that I own, my Loeffler Randall flats. They're so, so comfortable. They've stood a lot of walking around. And I think just because I can attest to the comfort again, then these are a really good one to go for. However, they are a little bit more expensive and you can find alternatives on the high street. Mango do a really great pair. I think just look for those small details. The mango ones have a bit of a higher kind of edge to them that the tongue or, or the, it's not really a tongue, the front of the ballet flat comes up a little bit more. The Mary Janes do make them feel a little bit more on trend as well, but I think the overall shape of the mango ones definitely work too. And then if you are looking for a really simple pair, H&M have some, again, lots of high street shops stock quality leather uh, ballet flats. Just go for something really, really simple though. I think I've got some ones to show you which are very simple beige. I also like that they're quite low cut this time. I think that does give an elegance to the ballet flat um, rather than that kind of mid style. I think you should either go for the higher up the foot or the lower up the foot. Um, and I think you'll find both of those, one, the higher up the foot feels more fashion forward and then the lower on the foot feels a little bit more flattering and elegant. Um, so just look for very simple things, no embellishments, not too much detail. And also what I like about these is that the bow matches the color of the shoes and the edging of the shoe also matches the overall color of the shoe. Let's move on to the chunky ankle boot. So this is a, a favorite for this time of year. And again, I do think you can go wrong with these. So my first example, again, it's that white stitching detail. I just personally think you should avoid it. I just don't like the look of it. I think it's too much of a contrast against the black. I think sometimes we just want our black boots to be black boots and keep them simple and leave it there. Again, I have this other pair that's got white stitching up the side and it's also got this elasticated 
detailing that goes all the way up the side as well. And I think there's something about this with that elasticated from top to bottom that just doesn't look very luxe. Um, and yeah, I just not a fan of this style. Something else I would personally avoid, which I don't really love on boots is lace detail, particularly on ankle boots. I think again, it just gives that slightly too workery feel. It really is like a heavy duty boot that just feels a little bit too industrial for me. I think it's nicer to have a little bit plainer and I think the laces just add to that. Um, I just don't think they're very flattering either. And yeah, I personally avoid the laces, especially on the lower um, ankle boots. Um, definitely then give that real industrial kind of look. And again, I've got some really great high street alternatives. Under the stories do some really good pairs of very simple black chunky boots that aren't too chunky. Again, it's all about not going for that extreme. Just go for a little bit of chunky and that kind of fits the trend, but also very wearable and also will carry you through lots of seasons and lots of occasions. So just very simple, plain black boot. M&S also have some very simple ones. Don't go too high on the leg. Don't go too low on the leg. Just keep it kind of above your ankle, um, but not too mid calf. Cezanne have some great ones too. I've had Cezanne boots in the past. Again, really comfortable, easy to wear. Um, so definitely look for those more simple options. I think with all the shoes really. Let's move on to a heel and I'm going to be talking about the pointed sling back. So these are definitely having that moment in the spotlight, but for me, they're always something I gravitate towards. I've been wearing this style for several years now, and I just find that they really suit my style and a lot of the pieces in my wardrobe. So I definitely would recommend having a pair of these. I think they just look so good to throw on with a pair of jeans. They just instantly make something a little bit cooler, but also a bit more elegant at the same time. So let's talk about some of those styles that I would avoid. And the first is kind of a block chunky heel. I think the point of these shoes is that they need to be very delicate and dainty. The pointed uh, toe and the sling back just feel very fair Feminine. And then I think that chunky heel just kind of throws the shoe completely off balance. I personally avoid, again, anything too embellished, anything too out there. This next pair, like the purple velvet with the diamantes, I think just looks really cheap, a little bit tacky. Uh, I think you do need to be careful with those embellishments on shoes. I think they can look good, but I think also just keep them very minimal. Um, I don't think they pair the best with the bright purple velvet. I think they'd look better maybe just with a, a black satin and then the embellished. So just kind of, if you're gonna pick one detail, whether that's the color or the embellishment, I think just go for one, otherwise it can look a little bit overkill. This next pair, the metallic pink, for me, it's just a no-go again, very kind of tacky looking. I think you do need to be careful with metallics. I think gold and silver always look great, but I do think colored metallics, bright color metallics just doesn't really work. And I think especially with the heel, it doesn't really feel modern either. Again, feels a little bit outdated. And then the final pair, I do just feel like looks really bad, low quality. I think that's to do with the type of patent that they're using um, and also that buckle on the front. Front. So just really look out for the quality. And like I said before, I do think you can tell that lower quality sometimes just from a picture. Okay, let's talk about some I would swap for. And again, under the stories have some really good shoe options. So I've got these in the gray, which I think might be sold out at the moment. They might bring them back, I don't know, but I think they've got other colors, um, black on there, which will be very, very useful. And again, because I own them, I know that they're comfortable. They've got a bit of a cushioned sole, which a lot of these shoes don't have. So that cushioning just makes a real difference. Also, we've got that kind of all elegant look with the pointed toe. I love the kind of side detailing of the sling back and then the very elegant heel. They're not too high, not too low. Um, they're a really good all-rounder pair if you're looking to update your wardrobe with a sling back. 
If you're looking for a slightly trend-led pair, then I would go for these mango burgundy ones. I feel like these have got a real YSL feel, and although they're patent like those black ones we saw earlier, I think you can just tell from the pictures that the quality of this will be a lot better and is a lot better and it just there's something about it that again looks a little bit more luxe and also they've kept it simple they've gone for just this bold patent burgundy and just kept the shoe at that and i think that looks really elegant Zara also stock a really nice range of slingbacks. So I've got this top pair here. Again, very versatile kind of color and shape. I love the very simple, elegant slingback of this. And then again, the foot front bit kind of comes up a little bit higher, has that kind of 90s feel, but as well as that kind of feels modern at the same time. So although it's a very simple shoe, there's just these little details of the shape that um, for me make it feel a bit more luxe and um, a bit more modern. So next we move on to the white trainers. So believe it or not, you can go very wrong with a pair of white trainers. My first case in point are these kind of chunky style. I don't really like this gray detail on them. I think the sole again looks a little bit cheap um, with it being this kind of beigey shade. And I think the chunkiness overall isn't really working. And although these are not a cheap pair of shoes, they do to me have that cheap feel. So next are these like wedgy uh, platform type of slip on white trainer. Um, I again would avoid these. Um, I think they're kind of a bit done. We saw these a few years ago and I feel like we're a bit done now, but also just I don't know, I think the shape of these ones, I think they just feel a little bit too much. Again, that that platform just feels a little bit too exaggerated for me. And then again, I'd avoid anything too embellished on your trainers or um, embellished at all or metallic. I think the point of trainers is that we want them to be more casual, laid back, undone, and having that embellished detail to me does just feel really, really tacky, but also um, I think it just kind of goes against the grain of the trainer um, and doesn't really kind of suit the style of what a trainer is meant to do and be. And I know we're all about breaking and bending rules, but I think here is a case in point where it just doesn't work. So alternatively, um, Veja have some really good trainers, plain white trainers, keep it simple, keep it minimal. Again, not too oversized, not too chunky, just a plain white trainer with not too much fuss on it, I think is always a winner. Again, I have a pair from Mango to show you if you want a more high street pair. And as I've been saying, just keep it really, really simple. If you are going for high street or uh, maybe like a lower price point, I'd say this actually, this applies to any price. Um, go for those more minimal details uh, or less detail because I just think they'll for one be a lot more wearable but two um, I just think they look a lot more chic as well. So let's finally talk about the suede ankle boot. I think we'll be seeing a lot of these this season as that kind of brown shade really comes into its own. Brown lends itself so nicely to suede particularly in the autumn winter. I think there's nothing nicer than a brown suede. However in a boot I do think you can go wrong with um, like a suede ankle boot. My first one again Again, it just has that very dated feel. I feel like this is very kind of 2010, um, this kind of very short ankle. Um, I don't think it's particularly flattering either, having a very, very low ankle. And then the rounded toe of this boot just makes them feel very clumpy and heavy and unflattering. Again, my next pair has that same kind of feel to them. I also don't really love the heel of this. I think this next pair of boots actually would look better if the toe was slightly more pointed and if the ankle was slightly further up. And it's all just about looking for those small details in the piece. Um, and that's where it can go so wrong in those little details. Again, I would also avoid anything too fussy. The one I'm showing you next with the snake print and the leopard print, there's too much going on here. We need to strip it back. The suede brown boot or a suede boot at all um, actually just speaks for itself. So we don't need any more details on there to complicate things. Also, I think important to note on this one is the color of the suede. This again, just looks like a bit of a cheap 
shade. I don't know what it is about it. It doesn't feel very luxurious. I think it's because it's a bright orangey shade. I think this would be much nicer in a more subtle um, shade, something a little bit more muted rather than the orangey. And then my final one, I would avoid tassels anything too western um i think keep it really simple i don't think we should be going down that cowboy route too much i think you still can create that look with adding denim things like that to your outfit without going down the cowboy route because you don't want to look like a caricature at the end of the day um so i think it's stripping those details away no tassels no embellishments and things like that um and just keep it simple and back to basics so again starting with a pair i actually own from totem again these are a little bit more expensive in this pair but i've got other alternatives to show you too but because i own these i wanted to share them these are a black suede boot i'm not sure if they do a brown version of these but i have had so much use out of these since i've got them they are just the best kind of pair of ankle boots for me especially for evening they dress up really really nicely i think they do do the black and just plain leather as well if, if that is something you are looking for but in terms of suede these just tick all the boxes. They've got a slim heel, the pointed toe, the um, ankle just comes up at a really nice point. It's fitted, it's not too gaping. There's no, you know, embellishment or detail or fuss on these. And I think that's what makes them so useful. And then next, if you wanted to go for a brown version, Mango, again, are coming up with the goods with these shoes this season. Um, they have a really nice pair of like a mid-brown suede. Again, they have that nod to the Western, but they're not too caricature-esque. And I just think these would be a really easy one to wear. With denim, I think they look so good with denim. They're just a plain brown. I like the shape of the heel. It's a bit of a modern twist to them. I like that they're pointed. Again, the leg doesn't come up too high or too low. There's no fuss on them. There's no zips or ties or tassels or um, croc or leopard print. They're just nice and simple. And I think that's definitely something to consider in all of your footwear. So everything will be linked below. All of the pieces that I said are good options to buy, they will all be linked below. And so hopefully that has provided just a bit of an insight as to how I gauge my shoes and what I look for and what I don't look for so that you can kind of do that when shopping. If you're a little bit lost on shoes, it's a very overwhelming world out there. Um, if you're not sure about a pair, maybe just run off a few things I uh, have mentioned today to help you when you are shopping and a bit unsure. So if it has been useful, let me know. And I will maybe do a little bit of a series of these. Um, so thanks so much for watching. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next YouTube video. Bye.